Click is the latest film to hit VOD that I am reviewing for you guys because I wanted to watch it. I wanted to seek it out and watch it for you guys and review it. And also because Tenet is still not out yet. It was supposed to come out yesterday, but because of the whole I can't breathe in my mask thing and people taking it off and being careless about what they do, movies are still getting pushed back and coronavirus is still expected to last for quite a bit now, despite people saying that if you wear a mask, everyone for the next four, five, six, maybe more weeks, we can get this a little bit more under control and be a lot like New Zealand, which is much better than us right now, but we can't because we're stupid Americans, so no Tenant review, no Mulan review next week, the original 2020 review plan scrapped. We're still reviewing VOD, frustration vent over. Let's talk about Relic. This movie is about a woman played by Emily Mortimer. Her name is Kay. She has a daughter played by Bella Heathcote named Sam, and they're going out to where her mother, uh, played by Robin Nevin, is living. Her name's Edna. She has dementia. She's very sick. People come in to take care of her, but she has gone missing for a couple days, and they don't know where she is. She has dementia, as I mentioned, so it can be, be really, really tricky. But then she just mysteriously comes back. No explanation. She can't account for where she's been or what's happened, and then more weird stuff starts to happen from there. Horror movies can have some really fantastic trailers, and I think that was definitely the case with Relic. It definitely piqued my interest when I saw it, and I wanted to check it out. It looked like the kind of movie that was right up my alley, because as you know, I'm a big horror fan, and I like it either way. I can like the more blockbustery kind of horror movies, the more traditional, bigger scares, but I can also like the slow, kind of meditative kind of horror film, the ones that you wouldn't expect to be a horror film until much later on. So, and I was hearing early buzz comparing this to the likes of The Babadook, as far as the, the same kind of a, not exactly the same movie, but like the same kind of of atmospheric kind of tone and stuff. I was very excited to see that because The Babadook is a really excellent movie. I was really interested to see that the Russos were producing it because previously, I'm, I'm not going to talk about The Avengers or Captain America, you know about, about that, um, but recently they produced movies like 21 Bridges, which was like a um, entertaining but really more so kind of middle of the road forgettable kind of cop thriller. And then you had Extraction, which had some really fantastic action sequences, a lot of great technical stuff, but ultimately was just kind of middle in the road as far as everything else. So I was interested to see what they could do with a movie that wasn't meant to look like an action movie, obviously. It looked more like a horror film that was getting comparisons to the likes of The Babadook because they have the potential, because of their status, to pick up some really interesting and good projects. And those last two movies weren't exactly, I think, the best use of their new status, but I was hoping this one could be the exception to that, and it definitely was. I really, really love this movie. It's a movie that obviously cares a lot more about the drama of the characters and the situation more than the horror, but still treating the horror with the same amount of respect. It's one of those movies that has a statement that it wants to say, but it perfectly balances everything that it has to do. You could potentially watch this movie just as like a surface level kind of horror movie and get a good fix out of it, but when you really take the time to analyze how they're kind of matching everything to a person having dementia, how people react to that and the, the fears of actually having that kind of disease or the fears of it running in the family, or, or the, the fear that you've been neglectful for all the wrong reasons, that you, you've been too scared to confront this thing that you should be confronting. This movie is really well written and well made in that regard. Natalie Erica James, I believe this is a feature directorial debut. I think she's made some other like short films before. I could be wrong about that, but she did a really fantastic job with this film. I, I, I think she really handled the material so well. Because as far as like directing goes, the, the horror sequences are really well done. There's a lot of more, there's a lot more practical effects than I was expecting, I guess. And it was really well done too. Like it really kind of got under my skin like, ugh, like I kind of wanted to look away, but it was like such a good effect. I was like drawn to it. <laughs> you know, it was like, they did a really great job. There's a sequence in the film where uh, a character kind of gets lost in the house because they turn around the corner. It seems like they're back where they were back there in the hallway. And I, I thought that was a really great video visual representation of like actually having dementia, like feeling lost or maybe feeling more confined, like everything's kind of closing in on you mentally in that regard because you are forgetting things or you're not able to remember everything, so it just feels very limited, and like you're trapped. So as far as having that kind of parallel, the dementia is the really scary thing here, but there's also like a more traditional kind of horror movie also going on. I thought she did a really great job handling that. Uh, there's a, a dream sequences. I, I believe there's like two, maybe a third one, but the two I'm thinking of are a flashback kind of dream sequence you know, uh, that's really more so just getting you in the mindset of Emily Mortimer and her paranoia and what, how she's feeling about uh, certain things that went on in the past. And it's not till later where they kind of give like a subtle like a uh, line of dialogue where you're like, oh, that is, gotcha. I know what that is now. I know that's why that's as important as it is. Okay, really good, really good. That's another thing that I really love about the writing of this movie. Um, 
aside from the the pairing of these two things but you have these subtle like lines of dialogue that are kind of dropped that get you some more details about certain characters and ultimately plays into what they're meant to be in the screenplay you know like uh this is one of those movies where there's not a whole lot of like laying out everything about a character there's certain things that you aren't going to uh, know about certain characters you're not going to get like full life histories but for me that wasn't really an issue because it just was it was very obvious to me watching it that these two characters are more so just kind of trying to relate to potential audience members of this movie that have been in the situation they're trying to represent them the people that feel like maybe they have been neglectful to other family members before that they're not doing enough that they might have more of a responsibility uh in a family uh, to, to, to attend to a, an illness like dementia. So I, I thought they did a really great job in that respect. But there is lines of dialogue that get you to know these characters in just a little, in a, just a little way so that you very clearly understand uh, the through line of the story and you understand the overall message, especially when it gets to the very ending of this movie that I really loved and how it all kind of ties together at that point. It's like, okay, I, I am totally cool with the way this movie was written and how the characters were written. I do think, like, just my one issue with it is that I think they they could have done just a little bit more as far as like there are certain things that I can maybe guess uh, that that are currently going on in their lives, but I, I think maybe clear answers maybe could have helped support the narrative a bit more with these characters. Uh, but overall, you know, they, they get a lot of mileage out of what they have. You know, for a movie that's an, like a little under an hour and a half, you know, they get a lot of great emotional acting out of these characters. There's a certain sequence with Robin Nevin playing uh, the grandmother, and she's not like, spooky grandma, be scared of grandma. She's like, like, really emotionally hurt as you can see with certain sequences and it's it's one of those that if you're close to someone who has dementia in the family whether it's like early or like really deep into it or you've been in this situation before this could be something that's like really like a, a big downer like really depressing like I was certainly watching it and I was like oh like I, I was expecting like some sort of emotion but this is like really raw and they're able to get a lot out of what is admittedly a very scary thing in real life like they, they did a perfect job and Robin Nevin you know she does an excellent performance in this and the other two actors as well Emily Mortimer and Bella Heathcote they have a really good chemistry with each other as far as they have mild tension it's not like one of those like typical movies where you know they have like an elaborate kind of backstory or there's a scene where they're screaming at each other in like a screaming match movie style it, it's one of those things where they're kind of they're a little at odds as far as like they disagree on how to approach a certain thing but it's nothing too like over the top movie it's just kind of one of those things like hey I don't think you should do that and they're like well I'm gonna do it anyways okay and it's like all right like it's kind of like, it's kind of like that mild tension but you still once again it, it all supports the overall message of the film like what Natalie Erica James is trying to convey so I was I was really fine with it I thought they did a really great job overall that they really did capture uh, exactly how this movie should have been, I thought. Overall, despite that one flaw that I mentioned earlier, I, I was really enthralled with this movie from beginning to end. It's very well made, skillfully made. It's got a really good eerie score to accompany it as well, good practical effects. There's uh, one thing that they have, like a thing that you look in the frame, and on the edge of the frame, sorry, and it's there. There's something on the edge of the frame, and that had me kind of constantly kind of examining all the cinematography, like is there something over here, something over there, you know? And sometimes they'll just show it, and it's a little more obvious that it's there, but they don't really pay that much attention to it. There's no like loud sound effect. They don't pull like some generic jump scare with it. It's just like, hey, here's the next shot, and this thing is just happens to be here. That's that's it, you know, and that that's really good. That's really wonderful filmmaking. I hope to see more from Natalie Erica James. She is a name I'm going to be looking out for in the future, and I hope you guys check this movie out as well. Be warned that it could be it could be really sad because it definitely hones in more on the emotional element. Um, but I think it's well worth it. I'm gonna give Relic an A. Some really good scare sequences, some really good human drama, good characters, good acting, really good filmmaking. This is definitely a VOD film that I would definitely recommend you check out. I feel like I've been reviewing a lot of like more mediocre bad movies recently. It's it's about time I review like a good movie. Thank God. But if you've seen Relic, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time. <laughs>